Hello. Can you hear me? Good. Hey, uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Tushar Katarki, a product manager on OpenShift, uh, uh, AI, ML on OpenShift. I focus on that. I'm very pleased to uh, introduce you this next topic, uh, which is about really how do you do uh, uh, machine learning automated and on top of OpenShift. Uh, with us today, we have uh, Itai and we have Guy from uh, uh, the uh, IDF, and they are going to start next. Thank you, Tushar. So, uh, hello, everybody. Uh, we are Itai and Guy from the IDF, and uh, today we're going to talk about a machine learning platform we developed on top of uh, OpenShift and Kubernetes that uh, creates state of the art machine learning models and uh, utilize the data scientists and uh, software engineer jobs in our organization. So a little bit about us. Uh, I'm Itai. I'm the machine learning team leader in the IDF. Um, actually, everything you see here in the demo is uh, something that we built in our team. And uh, Guy? I'm Guy. I'm R&D manager of a private cloud managed services project. Uh, especially OpenShift in that case that we're going to see today. So a little bit about IDF, the Israeli Defense Force, where Itai and I come from. Uh, right now, the Israeli Defense Force are in the process of uh, digital transformation. That uh, Our main goal is to accelerate the delivery and the development of uh, application inside our systems. Um, we have a wide variety of systems from management applications to what we're going to see today that accelerate the data scientist jobs. So uh, now let's move, let's move on to the main topic, how we can make you, each, everybody, each and everybody here in this room, a machine learning expert and build a really state-of-the-art uh, machine learning models in just uh, minutes or hours. But first, we need to understand uh, a little bit about machine learning and its basics. So actually, machine learning is just uh, learning from previous data in order to predict the future. And we'll uh, follow up an example that will uh, demonstrate the whole process during all the presentations. So we have here a data set of a medical diagnosis. And our mission is to predict if James will have a flu or not based on these parameters that we can see here. Um, and how we can do it? Actually, we have a wide variety of uh, machine learning models and algorithms. This is a really s a small sample of them, and we can use each and every one of them in order to uh, predict and uh, create models that help us to predict the future. But uh, each model here has its own configuration of, on uh, uh, his, his parameters, and it's usually a really exhausting task to just select the best one and fit it to the data. So we need help because it actually can take a lot, of, a lot of time in order to find the best solution to the problem. Um, so let's deep dive about uh, what a data scientist really do when he gets a new data set and starts uh, building the models. So first, we start with the data. We have a step called uh, data engineering, which includes uh, removing uh, irrelevant columns, making the data more predictable. Like in our flu example, we'll obviously remove the patient name column because it obviously will not predict if one will get a flu or not. But we, will, we, will, uh, we, I, we assume that fever, for example, will give us more uh, predictive uh, analysis if, if, about, if one will get a flu or not. So we'll, obviously, we'll give it more weight, for example. After that, we start the machine learning task, which is just taking uh, a lot of algorithms and models and start uh, fitting them to the data set, to the problem, in order to get the predictive model. Uh, you can see that it's a cycle, and uh, it's uh, almost usually, it's almost uh, every time exhausting process that takes a lot of time. Uh, it's based on trial and error, so uh, it can take a, even a few months for a specific data set. And after that, uh, we have the operations. We need to serve this model to, as a production service to different uh, applications and consumer to consume the, the, really the, the result of this model to predict the future. Uh, so in overall estimation, of, uh, in, our, in our organization, 
for example, if we take 100 uh, data sets, new data sets that get into our organization, in the final round, only five are really going to production, and that's because of this exhausting uh, process of building machine learning models. Some of them are falling because of uh, really, really uh, small things that, and it's just a waste of uh, data and waste of uh, knowledge, really. So from this pipeline, we can gather uh, four different top challenges that we are coming to solve. Uh, the first one is environment. Actually, machine learning processes usually require a lot of uh, unique resources, like GPUs, huge, num huge number of CPU cores or ARMs. And uh, these things are really hard to allocate dynamically. Uh, actually, before our platform, uh, data scientists just bought really big servers that uh, they owned them, and they, uh, each server was assigned to one data scientist. It just was really not cost effective because the resources weren't shareable. Uh, so we're going to show you next how we solve this one. Uh, the second one is history. We saw that we have a cycle of uh, machine learning uh, building process, and each time this cycle uh, includes a lot of model evaluations that are usually not uh, stored everywhere. So we're not keep, they're not keeping track of uh, the results you just got for each model and each configuration of model. And uh, this is not good because it's not only it uh, wastes a lot of time, we can use this history later in other projects and experiments uh, in order to make the building process more efficient. And we're going to see it also in the demo. The third one is optimization. Uh, we just want, we, we look for a tool that just take a wide, wide search uh, space, space and just give me the best combination of uh, search results, to, uh, of, just to give me the best model, obviously. Um, we'll see it, how we solve it distributed on OpenShift and how we utilize OpenShift and do it efficiently. And the last one is deployment. And here we have a gap between uh, data scientist, scientist knowledge and the software engineer's knowledge, because data scientist doesn't know enough uh, about uh, dockerizing applications and uh, operations. So we can't just take his mathematical model and uh, deploy to production as a REST API. And on the other hand, uh, a software engineer doesn't know how to handle this mathematical model that a, that a scientist built and uh, expose it as a REST API. So this is why a lot of uh, models really just don't go up to production. And uh, we're going to see how we solved it. So now after we understood uh, the challenges, let's see how we solved them. So basically, uh, let's go back to the first uh, challenge. It was environment. Uh, we deployed Jupyter Hub which is a common tool of uh, data scientists uh, these days. And uh, we control our, uh, these resources. Our resources are being allocated. It's allocated dy dynamically, actually. So, Guy, let's just uh, spawn a new notebook. Uh, here you can see a different variety of, uh, of machine learning, uh, let's say, environments. Each one of them is just in including uh, unique packages, unique uh, environments, un unique resources that depends on wi each, uh, which uh, data set and which problem I'm, I'm trying to solve. Uh, so right now we'll just uh, select the data science notebook because we want to solve the flu problem. <coughs> we spawn it, and uh, if we go back to the OpenShift to see, see what happens behind the scene, we can see that we got a new pod here with its uh, unique resources and uh, unique uh, packages. Actually, each notebook is just a Docker image that is being controlled by us. And uh, when the research is over, or when the data science go to sleep in, on that day, you just turn off the computer, turn off the notebook, and uh, the resources are being freed to other data scientists. Uh, this includes also GPUs, which are, uh, we have uh, Everybody doesn't have enough GPUs today, so this is how we, we solve this thing. Um, now let's move on to my environment that I prepared before. 
uh, you can see here Jupyter uh, with the flu data set we have just generated. We have here uh, the same data set we saw in the example, and a notebook that includes uh, our demonstration. So what I'm going to do now, we're just trying to uh, fit the data to machine learning models. So we're going to run a different uh, basic data science, pipe, uh, data science operations in order to fit the data to, the, to it. So now we're just reading the data. We are dropping irrelevant columns like the name column. We're just converting some uh, columns to numbers and dates. So the, the, the mathematical algorithm can uh, understand what's in the data and splitting it in order for us to evaluate it. Now let's uh, remember the second problem, the history problem. I'm going to build here now uh, three decision trees uh, algorithms. Uh, decision tree is just a predictive model that learns the data and then know how to predict future data. So uh, it has a, we can control the depth of the tree. And uh, this parameter actually uh, really uh, influence the performance of the model. So we're going to run, uh, to create three different decision tree classifier, and we're going to change this, de this uh, max depth parameter every time. So we start with a depth of, depth, depth of three, and we got uh, 0 0.54 accuracy. We try again with another uh, value, and we got another accuracy score. And we try again with five, and we get another accuracy score. <coughs> score sorry. So now, who remembers uh, the value of depth equal to three? Uh, I assure that uh, we, with the concentrated, concentrated enough is remembering it now. But if I ran uh, another 1,000 experiments, I assure you that no one will remember what was the result. And uh, maybe it was a good result. And we are losing a lot of data that way. Uh, so right now, I'm going to show you how we solved it using our, uh, ML, our ML tracker platform, uh, which is also hosted on OpenShift. So uh, let's just go. This is the UI of this. And uh, we, we are going to create a new project. You can see I just need to specify a pro project name and, and a description. And I can control also using a node selector feature of uh, Kubernetes which resources uh, are actually, which, which uh, resources will be running the pods and the workloads that uh, my experiment needs. Uh, we also have a direct connection to the object storage if uh, my data is saved there, but we'll no, not use it right now. So let's create that project. Uh, you see an empty project right now. And uh, let's return to the Jupyter and type in the newly created project here. And um, we are doing the same thing. We're just running uh, decision tree algorithms with different parameters. You can see that I'm importing here a Python package we wrote. Uh, and uh, we will use it uh, during the world uh, presentation. So we're just creating a tracker. And we know how to I mean, we. We input to it the model object. We give as input also the accuracy score and each um, key value metrics we want to keep track of. We're going to run again the three experiments as before. <coughs> and move back to the tracker. And we're going to see that uh, we have three different experiments with it, the results and the metrics. We can see that we know how to extract each and every parameters of the model. Uh, and it helps us in the future to understand which model was really the best, best one. Um, so this is the history part. Uh, the third one was optimization. And uh, we are going to see how we as a machine learning platform team can help data scientists uh, optimize their models really easily using uh, smart search uh, optimization algorithms that we're gonna, we see right now. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm just uh, <clears throat> defining the basic data science operation I did before. 
and I'm defining an objective function that actually going to run my models. And here I'm defin defining a search space. Right now I'm searching between uh, two different algorithms, uh, decision trees and uh, KNNs. And uh, each algorithm has its own parameters. Right now we're just t t testing two different parameters for each algorithm. And you can see the range here. We're actually defining, defining a really large search space for our uh, optimization problem. Uh, for example, the max depth that we tested before, right now we're testing it between the range of 3 and 20. And uh, we're going to define it and then deploy the optimization task to uh, OpenShift and uh, this uh, platform. A uh, good thing to mention is that uh, we're not uh, just running through the whole combinations. We have an, a, a smart search algorithm that knows how to do it really, really fast. Uh, you can pay attention to what we need to specify here. So it's just the space the objective function we defined, which search algorithm I'm going to use, uh, the number of workers, which we'll obviously see late, later what, what does it mean, and how many evaluations I want to do. That means how many models I will actually build, and uh, the more the better, but uh, it will, it will, uh, it's all, also uh, power consuming. So now let's run it and see behind the scene in the OpenShift What's going to happen? So we just ran it before, so 100 exper experiments are now uh, over, but let's do it again. And move back to OpenShift. And you can see here that a new pod, the manager pod, is being uh, created. And after it, three different Machine learning workers are created because we specified three uh, before. And their, their responsibility is to just run models with different combination that this manager are, is, is responsible to provide. As then you can see, we just specify 100 evaluations. And in about five seconds, I think, we just finish. And uh, if we go back to the UI of our platform, we can see that the whole results, and we see that we got slightly better results than uh, we got before. And it's all been automated uh, using uh, this platform and OpenShift. Um, so this is how we are optimized, actually optimize uh, and make easier, make easier job to the data scientist in our organization. And the last uh, challenge, the deployment challenge, so we, I'm actually not going to show you how we deploy real models, but I'm, do, I'm going to show you what is needed in order to, to deploy one. So it's, we only need to specify which frameworks the model was built in, the path to where it is, where is it saved as a file, and we support uh, object storage today, and the pre-processing pre, pre function name that is responsible for converting the data we want to predict to a one that the model can understand using the same basic data science uh, operations we did earlier. After we run it, uh, a scalable deployment on OpenShift will uh, be deployed, uh, three different uh, pods, and can be scaled by stress. And uh, a deployment in OpenShift, this is uh, really awesome. <coughs> No, let's go back to the slides. So let's talk a little bit about architect our architecture, how we gonna things done. So we have uh, three main components. The first component is the OpenShift, um, OpenShift components, actually the master and the infras running on a bare metal servers. Um, the second and main component of this architecture is the GPU compute nodes. Uh, each compute node have a two V100 NVIDIA cards on it, especially for all the GPU workloads that the system needs to be done, the application. Um, actually, we have a quiet problem there, because right now, each pod can uh, utilize, can assign GPU, and no other pods can share the GPU with it. So when you assign to one pod one GPU, the GPU is 
only for that part. And actually, on workload in production, you don't utilize 100% of the GPU, and it's quite a problem. Uh, this is the NVIDIA um, device plugin that's using right now. We fork that plugin and write our own written uh, plugin for the GPU scheduler that actually split the GPU and timeshare with everyone, uh, with the other pods on the system. And this is our main component of the GPU right now. We are adding four for a multi GPU node uh, based on NVIDIA DGX. Actually, when you want to run more complex machine learning models, you need to run it on a multiple GPUs, um, more than one or two, maybe eight, six at a time, sometimes more than 10. And this machine can do that. Uh, it's mean like one pod can share, can use six or eight GPUs without sharing them with any more pods. Actually, the live demo we are showing right now is based on the, this DGX, um, and everything is running on GPUs. So, uh, AutoML. Um, until now, we just saw uh, optimization, uh, smart development of how we optimize the data scientist uh, life in our organization, but actually, we needed some uh, knowledge in coding and some knowledge in data science in order to use it. But right now, uh, I'm going to show you how we build machine learning models using uh, only a data set and making all this process auto automatic. Uh, actually, AutoML is one of the most research uh, uh, topics in many academic institutions today. And uh, its goal is to automate the data science, uh, data scientist job. Uh, so we implemented it in our organization. And uh, we're going to show you how we give it as input the data set file, the, the CSV file we just researched before, and return as output a, a great model, a state-of-the-art model with really good results that is already exposed as a REST API hosted on OpenShift. Uh, so let's do it. I'm just moving on to the AutoML tab here and uh, upload the file. You can see that we know how to extract uh, the relevant columns from the, fi from the file. We just need to specify again a project name. And uh, when we click the interested column, in our case, it's the got through column. What is happening behind the scenes? We are trying a lot of different uh, uh, machine learning uh, processes, really complex one that scales the data and make it more predictable. And after that, again, we are using the same optimization uh, tool we used earlier, but right now uh, we're re running really complex models that usually requires a lot of optimization and consume a lot of time in order to do so. If you move back to the OpenShift, we can see that right now we have only two workers that run this, uh, this task, but each one of them is really strong. Actually, it has eight cores and uh, 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, in order to do this task, because it's, inside this, uh, there are really complex models that are uh, built in. Uh, it, can, it may take a while. It may take uh, an hour or um, even more. It depends on the size of the data and its complex, complex stability. But we already prepared the deployment that we ran earlier. Uh, we're going to show just a REST API that is going to predict us uh, if one will get a flu or not based on the only relevant columns our model uh, did automatically. So you can see here our model just, uh, just knew to remove the name column because it's irrelevant. And, uh, it from the auto yeah, later. and uh, right now we're going to just uh, give us input different values and see the predicted result. Um, so. Uh, Let's, let's type in some, some values. Uh, actually, this is a UI for testing proposals only, and uh, a, a real applications that hosted other applications that uh, hosted on OpenShift also uh, just uh, request this prediction as using REST API. So uh, this is how we really, we, we really make uh, smart applications. OK, let's click on predict and see. This person will get flu, we think. Uh, but let's see how, it, uh, how is it shown in our platform. So let's move on to the tracker again. 
We're still at 0%, but uh, it can take a while. It may take a while. And uh, move to our prepared uh, project. And you can see here that we got a new deployment uh, with green status. Uh, and we can also choose um, its uh, URL, because we support, uh, let's say, a kind of A-B testing for models. Uh, we support for each project. Each project can have uh, multiple deployments. And uh, each time, we can switch uh, the model that is actually being served using this API. So this is how our data scientists just test their newly built model uh, using this way. Uh, let's move on to the presentation again. Do you want to take a look about the OpenShift overview? Yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's a point uh, to mention. Uh, let's see what's really behind the scenes and what we have in our OpenShift project. So actually, we have uh, scalable deployments of models. We have the Jupyter Hub. Uh, and we have a lot of notebooks that being spawned on Jupyter Hub. We have Minio, as a, that is a, an object storage that help us to save models and keep tracks of exper <coughs> some experiments. We have a PostgreSQL that helps to host to be, is, this is a database of our application, actually. And a Rabbit MQ cluster, MQ cluster um, that is actually the master and the workers from the optimization uh, task actually communicate through a, a cluster, a Rabbit MQ cluster, a queue in order to, for us to keep a stable communication between them. Um, so this is, actually, this is actually our development. Uh, right now, let's talk a bit about the impact and what uh, we did in our organization. So each machine learning model that uh, were built manually, uh, when it gets into our, our platform, it got improved by a average uh, in about 30%. Improve, by improvement, I mean uh, performance or uh, some other metrics that uh, we evaluate model by. Uh, we increased the number of machine learning models in about 70%. And we got a huge growth in users in the past half a uh, year, about 600% of uh, growth. <coughs> and we face today a uh, a lot of challenges. Uh, one of them is uh, code remote debugging. Not every data scientist uh, work on Jupyter. Some of them uh, needs to work on the local machine, but actually they can't because they, because they need a GPU. So we, we are looking for a way for the, so that they uh, will work on the local machine, but the code will run on a pod or uh, on a server that uh, is actually hosted on a GPU. Uh, we're looking for a better way also to save experiments. As you saw, we needed to specify in our, in our demo what we want to save, which model, which uh, metric, which result. And we're looking, we're looking for a way to do it automatically. And also, we're looking for uh, AutoML for unstructured data, uh, like images or video. That includes also deep learning, uh, neural uh, network uh, search. This is a complex, uh, uh, complex topic. Um, we actually don't want to keep on with our own written device plugin. We want to get more upstream and standardized uh, device plugin that everyone can use and to share the GPU as we want uh, for multiple pods, as we explained earlier in the architecture. And we have, uh, we have a challenge to run and manage the multi-clusters of OpenShift and Kubernetes to get, manage them, operate them, monitor a lot of them uh, in a different locations. So this is our current challenges. Now to Shar uh, is going to. <laughs> so um, that, that's great, right? Did you guys like that? That's great, right? So what I thought I would do here is uh, kind of take a step back and um, kind of see uh, what's happening, right? Like you are already familiar 
uh, with OpenShift, I, I thought we'd start with the OpenShift architecture. You can see uh, your master and your worker nodes here, and your pods running. Uh, they are being exposed as uh, they are being exposed as services, uh, either within uh, the cluster itself or through the routing layer. Um, so, so what's and then all of this? Uh, you've got the storage, you've got the registry. Uh, you know, OpenShift is abstracting, and it can run on all the hybrid cloud infrastructure, be it physical or uh, public or private or virtual. Uh, so you're familiar with all this. So what what is uh, where where it is helping a data scientist, where it's uh, helping machine learning as a service is uh, you can confidently take. Uh, and build uh, your machine learning pipeline and workflows on top of OpenShift and bring uh, machine learning into production. Because one of the stats that I recently learned was 70 to 80% of uh, you know, models don't go into production, right? So I th we think, you know, and you know, Itai and Guy showed that, we think that OpenShift is a great platform for um, for overcoming that barrier, right? Like, how do you actually create workflows? Uh, how do you use the best of software development lifecycle uh, that uh, earlier we saw with McGuire Bank, for example? How do you bring that to basically machine learning workflows? Uh, and how do you uh, bring that into production? So I think, um, so that's kind of the first step. Uh, the, uh, the next step really is uh, some of the stuff that um, um, uh, Itai showed uh, in terms of uh, you know the Jupyter notebooks, for example, that were being developed, uh, that he showed, wherein you know it can spawn off uh, wo multiple workers that can use GPUs, etc. Uh, those are things that we are trying to. Um, yeah, that's one example, but then there was also an example of how workers and masters communicate with each other using some kind of, in that particular case, it was RabbitMQ. Uh, there, was, uh, there was also uh, storage uh, that he showed, uh, some kind of an interface to an object storage where this is stored. Um, you know, so what, what we are doing really is uh, with, the, with the collaboration internally and with the other uh, external partners, we have created this this project called uh, Open Data Hub. Uh, and Open Data Hub really is a reference architecture uh, built. Uh, so the Open Data Hub has two aspects. One is we have used that reference architecture internally uh, to build machine learning as a service on OpenShift at Red Hat. Uh, and uh, we are using it internally to do optimizations for our data scientists. Uh, uh, and then we are open sourcing it uh, you know all those things uh, as a reference architecture. So these are some examples of uh, those things that uh, are shown here. Um, there is, like for example, Kafka uh, to do streaming. Uh, there is Spa, um, uh, 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 and, and do messaging, and then there is Spark uh, to do uh, streaming and other data, uh, real-time data processing. Uh, there is um, uh, the Jupyter itself, uh, Jupyter Hub, uh, wherein it has these pre-built notebook images, and you can add more as you uh, need um, you know and uh, so uh, and then there are uh, we have a AI library uh, which has like optimized uh, 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 framework such as TensorFlow, um, built it on the Rel, uh, and uh, uh, Red Hat stack, which includes things such as UBI, uh, which is universal base image. Um, so, so that's basically in a nutshell what the Open Data Hub is. It is about saying that if you, it's a reference architecture that you can, which is open source based, which is all open source, uh, that you can use to create these end-to-end -end workflows on OpenShift and Kubernetes uh, for building ML as a service, uh, deep learning as a service. Uh, that's one aspect. The second aspect really is also to help partners, right? Uh, you know, um, you know, if if there is. Uh, a partner who, like for example, a partner uh, such as Anaconda, for example, for Jupyter, uh, you know, uh, they could use this reference architecture uh, to bring their uh, products and services on top of OpenShift using operators and operator framework. Uh, the, uh, um, Itai showed uh, AutoML, and there are other vendors such as H2O driverless AI, which can do the same thing. So, so. All in all, uh, we are excited about this, so we welcome, obviously, it's open source. Go to opendatahub.io, uh, provide uh, pull requests, et cetera, and provide input to, to us and feedback. The other thing that I wanted to 
quickly highlight before uh, ending really is our uh, continued uh, partnership with NVIDIA, uh, which uh, 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 around this stuff, um, you know, so we uh, uh, at Red Hat Summit, we introduced this idea, uh, a program called Accelerated AI. Uh, and what it is, is it's really an easy button uh, for bringing uh, AI and uh, creating ML as a service uh, in the enterprise data center. Here on the left, you can see a stack, right? Like you can see here that there is a x86 server. Imagine a bunch of them uh, having uh, GPUs. Uh, and then you have the CUDA drivers, uh, the NVIDIA drivers, and other uh, drivers, for example, if there is uh, uh, InfiniBand with Mellanox, those drivers all pre-installed, uh, automated. Uh, and then you have the uh, device manager plugin. And then on top of that, you see that there are the uh, NVIDIA NGC containers, which are these uh, pre-optimized, CUDA-based, uh, optimized for uh, um, um, GPUs, like they have various frameworks and libraries uh, for data scientists, like TensorFlow, for example, is one of them, but they also have very industry-specific um, uh, you know, libraries for uh, uh, machine learning. So that program, basically, so what you get really with this so-called uh, accelerated, uh, with the accelerated AI program is you get the NGC containers on OpenShift on x86 servers with GPUs, fully supported end-to-end -end from uh, Red Hat, obviously, uh, uh, and from NVIDIA, and from the OEM. So that's the program that we announced. We're very excited about that. Uh, there is a lot of uh, buy-in at uh, both companies as well as the OEM level. So, um, you know, you can find more about those. I mean, there are those resources. There's a blog on it, uh, and we collaborated with uh, NVIDIA on that. And then uh, we are also uh, inviting customers who are interested in participating to sign up if they are interested in this early access program. Uh, you know, so anyways, uh, uh, that's where I wanted to conclude and uh, thank uh, Itai and Guy for coming over and talking. And we are very excited about what we're going to do with respect to AIML on OpenShift. So, um, you know, uh, we'll handle questions off stage, I suppose, uh, if, if you have any questions. Thank you.